Hello YouTube, it is Damien, it is episode 2 of the rise of AUFC, Adelaide United, I am currently about to play the FFA Cup quarterfinal with, against Sydney FC, now for people that don't know, in real life, this game is actually the grand final this year, it is on Tuesday coming up, I will be there, as you can tell, I'm probably in the attire that I will be going the game in, I've got my Adelaide United top on, I've got my Adelaide United scarf on, ready to, uh, you know, ready to sing along with the ultras there, in the um, at High Marsh, as that's where the game will be played. I'm not. I don't sit in the ultras myself. Um, my friends don't like sitting in the ultras. I, I personally am a little bit of an ultra deep, deep down. I, I, I don't mind it, um, but uh, that's fine. The only time my friends are happy to be ultras is when we play Melbourne Victory, and we don't even sit there. We sit above, behind the Melbourne Victory. Sometimes it gets Melbourne City, um, and just get there. We hate you because you're Victorian chance out and a bit of that. But you know, me and my friends aren't. Silly, we're not we're not bad uh, football fans uh, when it comes to stuff like that. We give a bit of banter, and then as the game goes, we wave at a few and go good sing off and stuff like that. We don't we don't like getting in the uh, punch ups and the scraps because that's not football. Football gets played on the park, not outside the park. And um, that brings me on to my second uh, point before we actually get into the video as well. Is uh, watch Liverpool play this morning. Uh, it was great. We won four one. I was pretty happy. Went to bed. Wake up this morning. Went to go check the Leicester result as I don't mind Leicester as a club. I actually really do like this. I check all the results, but less is the first one I go to. Um, and then all the news came out about the helicopter incident. Now, I'm just hoping, you know, well, I think we all do who have watched these videos, that people that would have been involved or would have been on the helicopter, because no one knows who it is yet, um, are okay. And, you know, it's important in these times that, you know, the Premier League all comes together and make sure Leicester feels a little bit of love. Anyhow, that's enough of that. Let's get into football. Let's get into probably the, one of the more important games of the season. The first thing I did was like, I was going to take a look at the season preview. Uh, we all know Sydney FC here in Australia is the best team in the comp, bar, you know, maybe Melbourne Victory on their day. But Sydney squad is unbelievably good. Um, and, you know, the only team that comes close is probably Melbourne Victory in terms of roster. Melbourne City have four in a row. He's probably the best striker in the league. And he gets well taken care of by the FFA. Um, so he wins a lot of penalties and stuff, and you just go, really? Um, but, uh, you know, we were, when I went to see this screen by myself, I was like, oh, Sydney there, not a problem. Western Sydney back a few years ago, yeah, not a problem. You can put them up there. When we beat them in the final, yeah, they probably were one of the better sides around, but they've kind of dropped off a little bit. Brisbane Rule have never been the same after, you know, um, Andrew Postacoglu left to go coach Australia. Um, I actually have one of their lads to talk about as well from that era. Um, he's in the squad. We haven't signed him yet, but we'll have a chat about him in a second. Um, I expect Melbourne Victory to be there and thereabouts, but I just don't understand how Sydney are in there. Redmayne's a very good keeper. Zulu's very good. is really good. De Jong's De Jong. Nikovic is probably one of the better players in the league, one of the best players in that position in the league. You know, this, it, It's a good team. Wilkinson at the back. I really uh, like that. Um, that Alex Bross move. Oh, that's good because he's a good player, but I hate the guy. I wish he did that in real life. He was a bit of a bit of a flop when he played against uh, Adelaide in round one of the proper season. You know, flopping around, uh, getting very angry at referees. Got very angry with Jordan Nelson. Now, it's, Jordan Nelson's not a guy I would pick a fight with. He's quite a big lad. Um, Perth Glory being so high as well. Uh, expect Melbourne City to be third or fourth best in the league. Um, Wellington are well deserved down there. Newcastle probably have improved a little bit, but, you know... From about fifth downwards, a lot of the teams are very similar. Um, and then from fourth up, a lot of the teams have that just that little bit extra quality. And I say that, and then we went and draw 1-1 against Newcastle. What was a decent game? Um, I've watched it back now. Um, and Newcastle were a very good value for that draw too. So, you know, the a that's why I like doing the an A-League savers. The A-League's always close. I wouldn't say it's interesting like the Premier League where every team can be every everything. Um, in real life, it gets a bit scrappy. It gets a little bit... Mm, you know, uh, that's not football, that's just pumping along and seeing what happens. Um, but, you know, you always know that come the point the end of the season, it's probably between six or seven sides that can finish from anywhere between third downwards, and there's probably two teams fighting it off for the first and second. And you see how you go, and if you're luck's in, you're luck's in, and if not, it's not. Um, the beauty of the A-League is if you can sneak in at six, you can go and still win the, uh, you can go and still win the, the A-League. I was about to say the Premier League, uh, you know. We're, we're not there yet. Anyhow, enough about that and, you know, maybe SI getting maybe the A-League predictions and the A-League squad's a little bit wrong and, you know, the quality of players a little bit wrong, but that's just because it's the A-League outside of Australia. I don't think many people care about the A-League, and to be honest, if I had a choice between watching A-League and another league, 
probably another league than the A-League. But at the same time, it is a league that I do love and cherish, and LA United are very good lads. Now, let's get on to today. Now, obviously, we're playing Sydney FC. Um, this is how we're going to line up today. Um, you will notice one name, and his name is Seleski. Now, we did have him on trial for a bit. Seleski has played for Australia, and I think there is going to be fans, if they're watching from Newcastle Jets or Melbourne Victory, that know Seleski. Now, I know Seleski too, and it hurt me a little bit to make the signing because at Melbourne Victory, I thought this guy was a little bit of a twat a little bit i think most victory players are a little bit of twats but you know uh, that's just the rivalry between victorians and australians you know i like the state of victoria i just think victorian people are a little bit weird competitive you know that's the rivalry of, we're not going to get into that we'll, we'll wait for a melbourne victory game before we explain the melbourne melbourne and adelaide rivalry um anyhow um the reason why i did sign him is he's got very good determination which i'm big on people know from previous saves that you know I'm big on determination, great first touch, good passing, tackling technique, you know, teamwork, vision, work rate, you know, he's got it all for a deep line playmaker, but I'm actually playing him on a central midfielder on automatic. Now, you may ask why automatic? Because in the system we play him, is a, you know, it's a very high uh, possession-based system, but when we do lose the ball, we do counter-press, um, initially anyway. Um, I thought that him in an automatic system, he will switch between, okay, now's the time to sit in and defend because we haven't won the ball after our press, so let's just make sure we're solid. Uh, you know, he'll move into a pressing state, you know, in an automatic, okay, that's my turn, the press, let's go. Um, with the ball, he will know that he needs to keep it, play, you know, play short passes and dictate the tempo. And then he'll know that the time is, oh, there's space for me to bomb on here, you know, make my late runs into the box and stuff. I'll go ahead and do that too on automatic. Now, 33, he's not the most physical athlete, but the thing is that, you don't need to be a physical athlete in the A-League. You just need some very good technical ability and you'll be okay. Um, as you can tell, he's played a lot of games in A-League, you know, um, and I'm hoping that he'll be good for us as well. We definitely needed someone in here. Marcus Flores didn't want to come. He didn't want to bar of it. He's just like, nah, I'm not accepting a trial. Nah, I don't want to talk about contracts. Um, the next person that we've signed is this guy, the young chap. Now, um, like the uh, England, you know, trialist intervention, in, in um, Infantation event, you know, you, you always see Australia apparently have the same one. Um, I actually look for the center of excellence. I was like, let's just go pitch people from the center of excellence. It's not on the game anymore. I don't know if that's because in an Australian database, the center of excellence is called SASI or the AIS, and the AIS doesn't come up. So I don't know if I have to write in Australian Institute of Sport, but it doesn't look like it comes up. So I'm pretty upset with that. Um, I'm hoping they haven't got rid of this FFA Center of Excellence, and I'm hoping it's just because we load an Australian database that they haven't put it in. Uh, because when you load up any other database, apart from an Australian database, it says that they play in the MPL of Victoria or New South Wales, which I don't think is true. I think that they all have their own state sides that they all make up of, but in other databases, just say that it's one big club, and that's how they get all their youth prospects. Um, I just wanted to go pinch people. Anyway, uh, Bessinger, though, coming um, coming in and playing there. I don't know where he was released from. He's just maybe a regen for the game. Anyhow, he's just got very good potential, and he's got very good physicals for right back. The acceleration and pace, you know, and very good tackling. So I'm thinking as a, a, you know, a fullback on support. Eight crossings, really good for the league as well, you know. Um, so very good backup to Moroni. Um, can play when he has to, and probably can outgrow Moroni. I just don't think we're going to be here long term enough to see that he's going to outgrow Moroni as well. Um, there's a couple others. Um, Jane Sek Walk is going off to Sydney. I signed him and then realised that we have too many uh, foreign players. He only left five. Um, he would have been number six. Now he would be ideal because he can play ball playing defender, um, and then we can still play our. You know, we have two natural ball playing defenders, and we can play our system fairly well. Unfortunately, Jan is not going to come to us. Instead, Sydney are going to pick him up and make him a lot stronger. Um, I would imagine his work permit will be fine. Our Australian work permits aren't strict. Um, you know, oh, you want to play soccer here in Australia? Not a problem. Come across. We love you. Yeah, that's generally how the permit system goes for footballers. Um, Jay North, though, is the interesting one. And there's going to be a lot of Brisbane Raw fans that watch this and go, Jay North, what a player. And I'll be like, yes, agreed. Now, to be honest, I think Jay North's best position's here. Um, he played a little bit there for uh, Brisbane in cameos, um, but not playing there according to the game. That's fine. I would have put him not as a natural, as an accomplished. I would have just put him as, you know, yellowish, you know, like awkward. Um, but I think he had some very good performances there. He is a very good centre back. Um, the reason why I'll do it is, as much as it says that he's not the best ball playing defender, he's got ten passing for the league. That's superb. Um, you know, vision of seven does hurt him, but everything else about him is like, you know, not bad. Composure is very good for the league. Eleven's good. I think if it, if you stacked above twelve, it's good for the league. Uh, I actually think he would be alright. And um, there we are. I am going to try Taylor Regan out there though. He had a very good preseason. In real life though, I would probably like up with Jacobson and Elsie. 
Uh, Elsie just on the game has not been credited enough. So it sucks. I'm never going to move Elsie on. I do love Elsie, so it's fine. Um, anyhow, that's the, how the team's going to line up. We know the system. There we go. Let's get into it. Um, Preseason's been all right. You missed us play two games. We beat Nulunga all the way up there at Nulunga. Well, no, they played... Uh, yeah, we played up at Nulunga. So I'm hoping that that would have been on the artificial pitch they just built. Um, in real life, uh, it's not built yet. So you get to play on the dog park. Um, not That's not a slate at Nulunga, by the way. It's just how it is up there. You know, and that plays into their strengths. Um, you know, there we are. And then Raiders, we would have played at Raiders. Um, and we did win 3-0 as well. Um... I'm hoping that those games were played at Marden, but it doesn't tell you. We would tell and the Creation Sports Centre. No, we would have played at Raiders. Um, Raiders pitch is a bit weird. I think it's a bit bumpy and stuff, uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Anyhow, we won, and that is fine. All right, we're going to go back into this screen here, make sure everything's okay. Everyone's picked on the bench. As we know, on the bench, we know about starting 11. Halloran's got an injection. He picked up a little knock in that Raiders game. Um, you know, it's like a pulled groin, so just give him an injection, he'll be right. Malgarusha's on the bench because we need a keep, apparently, on the bench. Um, Bissinger, obviously, Elsie's on the bench. Ryan Kiddo, a lad that I went to uni with, is on the bench. Just need someone that can play right wing on the bench. There's also a reason why Ken Elsie gets on the bench is I actually think, as a winger, he's not bad. He allows me to move to a 4 2 3 1 if we need to chase the game and he's not bad up front as well the one thing is i did have him transfer listed for a little bit because if i could have sold him i would have taken the center back over him but the dane is now going to stick around anyway probably for the year uh vitz leo is back up um is a very good option obviously can you say i just talked about um it was a tie between george um george blackwood and stammer um the reason i've gone with george backwards is just a little bit more fitter um and he's probably a little bit more suited to playing as a winger if i had to as well, if we went to 4 2 3 1, we'd play also in the middle and Blackwood could play out wide. Um, Stammer can't really play out wide at all with that four crossing. But I think off the bench to impact the game, Stammer's probably the better option with the pace. It's not much, but it's pace. But the finishing, the first touch, it's not bad. Um, and he's got that bit of potential. And I know the kid, so probably why. Anyhow, well, I know his brother very well. Um, there we go. Uh, actually, I probably should Snapchat Manoli after this. It'd be like, look, your brother's on the game and I'm benching him. Anyhow. Let's get into it. Two people need numbers in the squad. Bessinger wants number four. He's not going to get it. And Elsa wants number 10. Not going to get it. Probably should have given him the number 10, to be honest. But there we go. Um, I didn't think about it and gave Seleski the number 10 because he's going to be playing in, the, you know. I like my numbers being, you know, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, you know, seven, eleven, and nine. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Um, but. When we get to submit numbers, if it asks us to submit numbers, it will happen. Anyway, they're lining up in a 4-3-2-1, very narrow. They do line up like this as well. And yes, that is the uh, Simi Diong um, on loan from Ajax. Yes, he is quality. He's probably one of the better players in the league with Honda um, and Fornaroli. So they're going to be all right. Ben Woolen has just moved from Ars to Sydney in real life. So he, there's Ben. Um, decent centre-back. Um, Sisak, who is transfer listed in goals as well. I would have played Redmayne in real life over him, but that's fine. We're obviously lining up in our 4 3, three. Let's get into it. It's been 13 minutes of me talking. What is new? We always ramble. Um, I'm going to ask my assistant to see what he wants. Um, whose photo is that? Hands put... Ange had better hair than that. <laughs> Ange, when he played, had a big ponytail. He was unreal. Um, anyhow, um, very good photo there of Ange. That, that amused me. What a play he was. He was a bit of a bulldog. He was no nonsense defender. I'm winning the ball and you. And if I can't get the ball, I'm taking you out. And that is fine. He used to fly in the challenges. But he wasn't dirty like Kevin Musket. You know, Musket, if he couldn't win the ball, it was knee high challenges. People might remember him from Will. I actually didn't mind Musket the player as much as it was a flogger. I don't mind that no-nonsense defender that if I have to do it, I'll do it. Um, I just think as a coach, he annoys me. Um, anyhow, talking too much about Melbourne victory for a game against Sydney. Anyhow, um, we're about to take charge in first match. And United, it's obviously a special day. Um, about Yop's absence. Yop probably is a decent fullback for the level. Um, focus on what we can do today. The only thing is that he would have been playing on the left and Halloran on the right, even much as with Paul Groin, he's not bad. Anyhow, this game obviously here at Highmarsh Stadium. We need to set all this up as well. Um, there we are. And get that on there. As we get a corner and Halloran front post, cleared away. Isa is back over to Halloran inside. Taylor Regan can't get his head to it. Back to Halloran again. Early pressure from Adelaide United into Goodwin now on this left-hand side. With Halloran ball back in and it is going to be another corner. Don't know why we've seen that highlight to start with. 
We are on extended highlights. I will move it to Key in a second. Halloran, though, his ball there. Dion clears, but only as far as Isaias now. Isaias, the deep line playmaker, the captain of the club, finds Bolan, finds Seleski back into Bolan. Bolan back to Seleski, into Isaias. Look at us keep the ball in the early stage of this game. It's quite good, and that will be the end of the highlight. What we're going to do is we are going to pause. Okay, we are pausing. Got worried then when it didn't pause. I'm like, was I hovering over OBS and the end of the recording? Anyway, key highlights, because or else this could go for a while. And let's get on it here. Um, for cup finals this year, I will be putting on extended. Not that people didn't like that I put it on key. The only high, the only final that we did well is a highlight. Anyway, Galloway. Isaias now. Back to Galloway. Galloway now. Back into Isaias. Keeping the ball well. Back to Galloway again. His ball front post. Bubba doesn't fall to him, but Craig Goodwin does. And if he did that in round one, where we played Sydney in real life, he would have won me over 150 bucks because I had him for first goal score. But no, he missed his one-on-one. -on -one. But here he scores, and I'll take that. Isaias now with the ball. Finds it over there to Galloway. His ball there. Bubba gets there. It was a decent tackle from the um from the centre-back. His name hasn't come up. It was Wilkinson. Goodwin, though, fires it. Sisak couldn't keep it out. And it's one new Adelaide United. And straight away, another corner. Halloran's ball in back post. Headed by Wigan, but cleared away by Wallen. Zulo now. Maybe a chance for Sydney FC to break here as the members stand in behind the... um. In behind the uh, benches there. Gets a full view of what was going on. Jacobson on the ball. All the way back here to Izzo, who isn't the best of his feet. He goes long though. It's a great kick to Galloway. Up the line. Finds Craig Goodwin. He can beat a man. He gets to the byline. He whips that one in. Bubba gets up. He doesn't win it. Seleski heads down. Halloran! Oh, what a save from Sisak! What a save! I don't know if you say that was hit the post, but it looked like a save. If it's a save, we've got to watch it. Sisak's gone unbelievably well. That arguably should have been a red. Why have we missed it? That's probably the highlight here, isn't it? There we are. Sisak, Halloran. Sisak pushes it away. All right, so we're going to watch that back because I, I, I love watching saves. And there's some saves in the A-League that, you know, Australian keepers don't get credited for that are unbelievable. Uh, so one thing about the A-League, if you want to see some good goalkeeping, Australians can produce some decent keepers. Seen over the park. Not so to eat your heart out. Ball there from Halloran. Look at that. Bottom bin. Sisak gets down. What a save from the lad. Um, that frustrates me a little bit because we probably should have scored, but back to director and off we go, back to being live. Stop recording. Okay, not a problem. There we go. Let's play. 21 minutes in here. Sydney FC on the member side. Lafondre up to Morano. Morano now, um, loses out to Silva there. Finds Josh Berlante over to O'Neill. O'Neill now running forward, driving into the space. It's Aiesto though, with a trademark tackle from the middle of the park. Goodwin now on it, beats his man, drops the shoulder, taking him down the line. He beats him again. There's two around him. He beats another one, but he's cynically brought down here. Berlante is being called over by Chris Beef. He made a very poor call against Western against the in the derby with Western Sydney and Sydney just gone yesterday. And he's been sent. Berlante's gone. Look. Personally, a little bit harsh, but I'm loving it. And there we are. Josh Brillante is gone. I wouldn't say it was it was cynical, but you know, it wasn't like it was knee high and studs were showing. He just went through his man. For a yellow would have been suffice, but Chris Beef is gone. There's no VAR here in the well. There's VAR in the A League because it's cost a few clubs already. But he hasn't gone to VAR here today. We know what's in the game. Dominating the game, seven shots, four on target, sixty-two percent possession. And there we go at half time. I was talking about a cup final before. I was going to say, the only time we didn't put it on key, we had every cup final last year on key highlights. I've got a little bit of slack for it from the Twitch chat. So we won't be doing that again. So if we make the cup final here, we won't be putting on key highlights, be on extended. The only time that didn't come back to bite me was um, the HK1 because there was a lot of actual key highlights in that game. Um, I think it was the Liverpool game. People got upset with, it was two highlights throughout the whole game. The game itself went for four minutes or five minutes. And yeah, and we won at 1-0 because we scored in the second minute. Anyhow, I'm happy so far. Keep it up, boys. We're starting to choke on something. I don't know. Hopefully, we don't choke. Um, and we'll be okay. We're going to start the second half here. Uh, everybody playing, not extreme, you're not well, well. But I'm happy with the result. It's just, it's, Billy's doing quite well. <coughs> don't know what I'm choking on. Start the second half. Off we go. It's highlight this, this episode's had it all. It's had me choking. A lot of talking about Melbourne victory where we're playing Sydney. We've had a crisp brief howler to get Josh Berlante sent off. Um, and Sisak's pulled off a wonder save and we're one new up to Craig Goodwin who couldn't do it in real life. It's so yes now. Down he goes. That's a penalty surely. And given. Jacobson to take it. Interesting. Interesting. Don't know if that would happen in real life. I think Craig Goodwin would normally take it in real life. 
But Jackson steps up. He looks calm and ready. Composed. Sisak goes the right way and saves it again. The Sydney FC keeper is having a weldy. And there we go. They haven't fixed goalkeeper ratings. He should be on like a 7.8, 8.0. Wow, Sisak keeps it out, and the longer this game starts, it stays at 1-0, the more uh, worried I get, but we are dominating the game. Anyhow, pause it, tactic screen, time to make a change, Halloran's going to come off, and we're actually going to bring on Elso out there as a winger. Um, I know he's only one star, but he's actually got very good stats for it. Um, you know, he's got nine crossing, which is really good for the league, got decent passing, got decent pace, got decent dribbling, um, and I think he's just the better player than what Ryan Kiddo is. Um, you will expect me at some point, my, my next change will probably get Bubba off and bring Kiddo out there anyway and then move Elso into there. But I just don't want to, you know, kill um, o Halloran anyway um, with uh, his injury. I don't want to make it too, uh, you know, prolonged, so to say. Anyway, highlight here for Sydney FC. Grant finds O'Neill. O'Neill's cross there. Galloway deflected. He so doesn't deal with it. And that's what happens when you don't put your chances away. It is 1-1. One, one. We've had great save from Sisak. Jacobson missed the penalty. Once again, it was a great save from Sisak. Sydney FC with their first real highlight go down the other end. And it's a deflected cross. And it's goal. Bit similar to how we uh, conceded today. Um, you know, uh, Liverpool, that is. Um, with the cross is deflected. Um, Alisson came for him, probably would have had it. And then... Well, anyway, Issa Issa can hit a free kick. He goes for it. Issa Issa! Oh, just over the bar. It was close. Anyway, we're clapping it. It's not too bad. I'm going to make a late change here. Bubba's actually really good for fitness right now. Anyway, it's a year though, before we make the change. Here's Bull front post. Curves it in there. It's deflected straight into the hands of Sisak. Now, this might be a Sydney FC highlight, um, highlight, but here we go. Sisak goes long. Can we win it? We don't. We allow Nikovic to bring it down uncontested. Nikovic there finds Zuvela. Zuvela finds Grant. Grant now on this left-hand side. Still with Grant. It's tackled by Moroni. It was a great challenge. Goodwin now on the break. Bubba's still on the park and he's quick, but we know how quick Goodwin is. He beats one. He lips it inside. He whips it inside. De Jong's going to win that. Moroni gets it back. Bubba over the top. Doesn't find him. That's not in our uh, mantra, uh, Moroni. We prefer you to keep it. That, that is in Sydney FC mantra. De Jong's in here. De Jong 1v1 with Izzo. He should scored and there we go with that in mind i think the midfield three are getting a little bit tired i want to keep this you see out there ball looks okay seleski is probably going to come off there for leah and we're going to just move leah into this ball winning midfielder and try and win the ball back as well um as much as possible um, i'm just going to hold him in a little bit more of a defensive role just to tell Bolan just get a little bit more involved in the further part of the game um in terms of changing that i might leave the kiddo change for the last couple of minutes it could be for Moroni and give um, Simone his, uh, or Simon, uh, Simone if you're playing in Europe, Simon if you're in Australia, um, his, uh, his debut in extra time as well. Anyhow, continuing on, I'm going to keep the system the same. Um, possession has waned a little bit. We've gone a little bit out here. You say he's looking exhausted, but your club captain, you could take a penalty. And we are going to extra time here in the FFA Cup here at High Marsh. I'm very happy with the way, you've been unlucky so far is what I'm going to say. Bubba wasn't happy. He's not having the best of games, though. There's a lot more to come from you. Look switched off. All right, not a problem. I tried to save it. It didn't happen. Bubba's off. Can he also get up there? He also doesn't mind playing as much. He prefers playing as an advanced forward. I don't mind that. Get him on the last shoulder. Um, there we are. I'm not going to change anything crazy. Ryan Kiddo is going to go out there as a winger. Um, he can play on inside forward very well as well. I might actually do that because I'm pretty sure Ryan's left footed by memory. He is. Um, and I'm just going to move Morone now because we are playing quite well, to wing back on attack. Maybe full back on attack. Maybe not as advanced, but still looking to bomb on. Um, in terms of tactics, don't overlap on the left, but overlap on the right. I just don't want to give him space in behind. How's it going, cheeky dog? There we are. You nervous too? I am too. My dog's wanting to either go outside or wants pats or something. But she, uh, she realizes that it's a little bit stressful here. Hello, Cheeky. Yes, you're there. Anyhow, time ticking away here in extra time. I can't handle penalty second. Oh, 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 what have I said? Zolo, Wallen, flicked on. Alex, half the bar! And Kiddo clears. All right, pause now. Team instructions. No, no, no. Op uh, shouts. That, that's where it is. Get off the screen. Cancel. Shouts. <sighs> what to say? I wanted to get creative because we've got a man advantage. I wanted to demand more because... We've got a man advantage. Show some passion I don't want to do because I don't want someone getting sent off stupidly. Got to tell them to create. There we are. Because we are the better side here. We have been, apart from a little period and they scored in it. 
There we are. End of half to end of first half extra time. We're moving to second half extra time. It is time to be a hero, but not time to be a villain. That is for sure. As we're going to get into it here, I've won quite a few foot champs games in extra time in the second period scoring late. Can the boys channel the inner me on FIFA and find one? That would be nice. Look, people looking nervous, people looking disinterested. I'm not changing the system because I think it works well. And anyway, Zulu though, on the ball, throws it in. Can we win it? We do, do we? Moroni now. His ball inside. He say yes. Back to Moroni. Inside to Vince Lear. He's looking for Moroni, but doesn't find it. And the ball to De Jong finds O'Neal. O'Neal now. Sydney FC do have pace on the break. Zulu now into the ball there. O'Neal again finds Grunt. Can we press it and win it here? It's a good tackle for Vinny Lear on the ball winning midfielder. Finds it is so. It is so on the ball. Can he whip one in? He does. Cuts it back as far as Gutaway. Hit one from here in the game against Sydney FC. Looking for Goodwin. Cuts it across the ball. It's in! I don't know how to comment on that one. I don't know what I've witnessed, but that might be the most A-League goal we see on FM, and that's exactly how it goes in the A-League, because that's how we score goals in the A-League. <laughs> Galloway gives it off to Goodwin. He's gone and rip it in. It's hit the... It's hit... Ritre. It's hit the post. It stopped on the line, and Sissus, instead of picking it up, has slid it into his own net. I don't care. Pause the game. Team instructions. <laughs> Much lower tempo. Get them off positive as well. Uh, play out from the back, that's fine. Don't work it into the box. Dribble less, be more disciplined. Um, there we go. Time wasting. Always, frequently, yes. Edit. Apparently I can't change positive. Alright, there we go. What are we watching here? This light, the guy at time ticking away. Is this a highlight for Sydney FC? It's a good tackle from Jacobson anyway. He gets tackled. It's a kerfuffle of bodies. It's turning into a scrap here, ladies and gentlemen, here at Highmark. But I don't care, because I reckon we're going to win 2-1. Izzo goes the other way. Finds Galloway. Good kick from Izzo. Just do that in real life, son. I will admit, they pass it to his left foot a lot, which, I, you know, obviously he doesn't have a left. Goodwood, though, finds it. Mirko Bolan. Bolan now. His ball finds Galloway. Galloway, his ball up the line. Goodwood looked offside. He was offside. It's got to update those changes. Depends how much time the referee adds on for our celebration. But it wasn't the biggest celebration. It's full time anyway. We're through. Well, that was stressful for the second ever episode of FM19. That is for sure. In a game that we've dominated, we gave them back a goal when they had 10 men. We then couldn't break them down. They then hit the bar with 10 men in extra time. And it's taken the scrappiest own goal that I've seen on Football Manager ever to win it. Um, but that's how goals go in in the A-League. Because that's the quality of the A-League. It makes a good viewing. If you've enjoyed the episode, give it a like below, obviously. I want to see if the draw gets done right now. Um, I, thought I saw it. I don't know if the draw gets done. It gets drawn on Tuesday. Um, what I might do, actually, is we'll, we'll go in and we'll sim to the Tuesday game. We're going to quickly save. So we're going to put that as a second part. Um, I'll quickly sim through the uh, couple of preseason games that there are. I don't think there's a league game in between. I think we've got a game at Cumberland and that's it. Um, anyhow, so instead of this being the end of the episode, we'll be back in just a second. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, YouTube. We're not at the draw just yet, though. Um, got a signing. Now, I talked about Jay North. What about Chris? Now, Chris is another centre-back that was in that invitational game um, that I talked about where we picked off Simon. No, we picked up Simon, sorry. Um, Chris, he plays in Jade North's position. He's a bit more of a no-nonsense centre-back. Now, I did go to sign Jade North, and apparently we got 20 people over the age of 21 that are registered at the club, and that's obviously not allowed. Um, I was trying to get rid of a couple just then, and they both want to leave. I tried to get rid of Ryan Strand, who's an American as well. I don't know why we got him here. I'm hoping he's a dual citizen, because if he's taken up a spot, I thought that Ryan Strand was Australian. Um, if he's taken up a foreign spot, I swear I am releasing him very quickly. I try to get him on mutual termination, doesn't want to leave. I don't want to pay his compensation, though, um, because obviously that's pretty big for the club's finances. Um, but as you can see, Chris is only 16, but he's already got 11 headering, 11 marking, and 9 tackling isn't bad for the league. With games, he will grow. Determination's a bit low, yes, but he's got good pace for a young centre-back as well. Um, and he's got very good bravery and anticipation. His aggression's low as well. So as much as he's temperamental, he's not going to show that on the part by getting sent off, you would imagine. He does have low composure, but should be okay. Uh, the one thing was pace and positioning in the A-League as a centre-back. You're pretty damn good. Um, you know, obviously, we've scouted him, and he's got very big potential. Now, obviously, we're not going to be here long-term, nor do we think. Um, depends how quick the A-League goes. But it's like a fourth-choice centre-back, you know. But between him and Elsie and himself, just gives that little bit of cover. I feel like it brings our squad into just the right amount for depth. We're probably a left-back short. 
of having very good depth here at Adelaide United. Um, so that would probably be the only other signing I would make. It's probably a left back. Um, and we'll see if we can make it. So Chris is going to come in. So it's not the draw, obviously. But we'll be back in just a second. For you guys, it'll be like that. For me, I've got like two more days of sim. You'll be back, back in just a second. We have the FA Cup semi-final draw. Here we go. FFA Cup semi-final draw. Now, there's two Melbourne teams that I wouldn't mind grabbing. Victory, obviously, being the uh, big rival, right? Melbourne Victory, if you go to their general information, um, their fierce rivals are... Well, um, wow, really? The game has that wrong. Melbourne City local, okay. Sydney FC historic, eh. Uh, Derbies... This is the big one. And even everybody in the A-League says the big derby is the Victory United derby. That is pretty trash. All right, uh, what's with goalkeepers being linces? Lawrence Thomas just won him an A-League title last season. Interesting. Um, another keeper being interested. I'm now tempted to see if I go to uh, our, you know, it's going to make me do it this way, isn't it? If I go to our club and go to club in general, fierce rivals. It's a historic, it, it's the the biggest rivalry in A-League football. It's the most historic. It's got the biggest background. Anyhow. Once again, this episode's turned to a lot of Melbourne Victory Alley United, hasn't it? Anyway, view draw. Let's go. Are we going to be first at the hat? I want a home semi-final. Please, game. I don't want to go away to Perth because it's a big trip. Um, Perth's probably the easiest side to be playing, but it's a big trip. We have to go away to Perth, the two and a half hour time zone difference. The only place in Australia where you go there and you go, far out, that was a bit of a flight. So we will be going away to Perth. Is that going to be the next episode, though? We'll find out. We do get Perth. We probably will be favourites for that one there. The Perth Rectangular Stadium. What a name. Um, there we are. So we've got Sydney FC, Newcastle Jets. Um, what I'm going to do is this. Is This might be the first opportunity we might get the stream. Um, obviously, I'm doing this Sunday morning. I've got work in about an hour and a half, two hours away. I've got work. I'm uh, working all day. Tonight, I may be able to stream. I'm not 100% sure. There's also foot champs to be played. I've only played 13 games. Uh, yeah, 13, 11 and 2. Um, I haven't, didn't play any last night. Played cricket. Cricket was okay. Um, then went to a cricket function. Um, stayed there. Drank a bit. Then went home. Watched Liverpool. And then went to bed. So didn't get to play this last night or foot champs. Um, so this morning... Wanted to really get this episode out, so this is why we're here. Uh, tonight, might be able to stream. Make sure you follow me on Twitch. You may see me pop up. Uh, definitely reckon Monday night's generally a good night, and I reckon Monday night will probably be a stream night for this. Be our first night that we can really go and stream. Um, in terms of for YouTube, we will be bringing the FFA Cup semi-final. Now, for whatever reason, we can't stream, but uh, we will do a YouTube episode. I'll probably make it Newcastle Jets in Perth Glory Centre if we've just played Sydney FC. And I'll do just a double header. Um, and you'll see us play home and away in that as well. Um, but if uh, we are on stream, please come check it out. We'll probably be streaming from Sydney FC onwards. And you'll see the Perth Glory game live. Um, and if we are streaming, it'll just be the Perth Glory game for the YouTube episode for episode three. Anyhow. Links in the description below for my Twitch and my Twitter. Um, just so when we're about to go live, we post it in the Twitter. There's also a link to my Facebook, but that's just, eh. Uh, look, not many people go and like the Facebook page. Um, it's mainly, mainly people, my friends that just don't want me to post it on my, you know, actual Facebook, but post it in my in a Facebook page so we're knowing, so it doesn't clutter up their news feed. Um, uh, so if you want to like that as well, by all means, but the Twitter's the major, main one for updates and what when we're going live and screenshots and so on and so forth. Um, and then obviously follow us on Twitch so you get a little uh, notification every time I go live. Um, don't have to subscribe. And then, you know, we don't do it for people to subscribe and stuff. Um, but go give it a follow. Come have a watch. Um, generally stream at night time most times anyway. Um, just as everybody wakes up in Europe, uh, like to get on, like the stream. Uh, it's a nice time zone for me to do it as well. Uh, you know, streaming this time of the morning usually doesn't work out for myself. Uh, there's also, you know, I think pretty sure Dr. Benji's still streaming this morning as well, um, which I'm about to go watch. So I don't really want to go head to head with Dr. Benji streaming FM19 anyway. Um, but the stream will be live at some point. This save does give us an opportunity to stream. I can't wait to stream. It's been a long time coming and I miss streaming and I miss that interaction as well. So if you're still watching this video, please go and check out the stream. Go give it a follow and come watch when we go live for probably that FA Cup semi-final against Perth Glory. Thank you for watching episode two. It's probably been the most A-League of episodes. You know, we've gone around and roundabouts. We've had 
penalties missed, keepers pulling off great saves, deflected own goals, which keepers probably should have dealt with. That happens in real life too. Um, we've had a draw, we've had red cards, we've even had a signing even though we weren't planning on it. It's been a good episode. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wherever you're watching from. This is Damien signing out of YouTube. Catch you in the stream, hopefully, next time.